All right, folks, I want to welcome our guest to the show. It is Joe from Western New York Bigfoot Investigation Group. Welcome to the show, Joe. Oh, thanks for having me, man. I'm glad to have you. I know we were trying to line something up with me being a guest on your show quite a while back, and I had some kind of a scheduling conflict, and we didn't make that happen. But I had a blast hopping on Squatch Talk with you and Leon and Pat the other night. It was a good time and a good talk, and I'm glad that we got to do that. So I'm certainly glad that you're here tonight. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it was. That was that was fun. And um, yeah, I mean, I have openings and, uh, you know, so the, the invitation to be on the podcast is so you have two to choose from. So um, depending on what day is uh, easier for you, it's either Sat Squatch Random Live on Mondays or uh, Joe asks, wait a minute, what on Fridays? Awesome. Well, we'll have to get that lined up for sure. So most folks may not know who you are. So briefly, just explain to the audience who you are and kind of talk a little bit about your background and what got you interested in this Bigfoot subject in the beginning. Uh, well, um, well, first of all, um, Western New York Bigfoot Investigation Group, that's my, that's my uh, organization uh, for, for what it's worth. Um, it used to be actually uh, Western New York Bigfoot um, research organization, but it changed. And there's many reasons for that. I'm not going to go off on that tangent. But so whiny big uh, is what it is, basically. And um, I started it just uh, not too long, six, five, five, six years ago, really. Um, up until then, I had no name for an organization because I was just going out and trying to see if I could find evidence of this thing. And I've been doing it since I was about 14 years old, really. Um, now, I never wanted anybody to get the idea that I'm like a professional Bigfoot researcher or a professional Bigfoot investigator because I'm not. Um, <laughs> I'm just, this has been a very, very fun and interesting hobby ever since I was 14. Um, and the reason I started at 14 is I found a footprint. I was squirrel hunting one day, which I did a lot of back then when I was a kid. Um, I found a footprint by the side of a creek uh, near where I lived. And um, well, at first I, I thought it was a bear print, but um, upon further inspection, even back then as a kid, I mean, I knew what animal tracks looked like and I knew what people's feet prints looked like. And that's what this one looked like, except for it was really, really big. Um, I'm not going to bore everybody with the whole story of that, but suffice it to say that one footprint, um, which I absolutely know was not a bear print at all. Um, that's what got me started. But at first I didn't think it was Bigfoot. Of course, I didn't really start thinking along those lines until I don't know, a little time, sometime after finding that footprint, I didn't even tell anybody that I'd found it, you know, cause I didn't want my father freaking out and going, well, you you probably shouldn't go hunting in that area no more or something for a while or whatever. Cause I was thinking it was big, crazy hermit, you know, big one. Right. Um, then I saw, uh, in search of, and I saw the Patty film for the first time and then talking about Sasquatch and it just dinged in my head. Wow. I wonder if what left that footprint could actually be one of those things. And that's basically what got me started. So, 40, almost 45 years ago, um, I just started in on this hobby, man, just trying to see if I could find more footprints. I didn't know, you know, I mean, a kid, you learn as you go. I, I wasn't looking for back then like structures or tree bricks. I saw those th kind of things all the time when I was hunting and would chalk them up as to whatever natural causes or bushcrafting. Somebody built some kind of lean to, et cetera. Um, and to this day, I still think some of that, most of that is what it is. But um, just going through uh, the years, just trying to find more of these things, trying to see one. Um, and that didn't happen um, until about two years ago. Um, now, it's amazing to me um, that it happened at all. Um, the odds I thought were totally against it and there's reasons for that that we can talk about later but um yeah two years ago a little over two years ago now because it was august of 2020 and i wasn't even look and of course 
people go, well, you find them when you're not looking for them. Well, I can't argue with that. I cannot argue with that because I was not, uh, during my encounter, I was not thinking about looking for Bigfoot. I didn't have any equipment with me or anything like that. Um, I was simply in the woods that day to go retrieve a hiking stick uh, that I had left out there uh, like the week before. I was, I'd been out there. It's a, it's an area I love to go camping in. Um, and that had several people uh, report, some of which I believe, some I, yeah, I'm not sure they might have been yanking my chain. But there were the important thing was there were some people that I did find credible that had reported, yeah, there's something out here, you know. And um, so I had found what I thought could be a footprint. Now I casted it, it didn't turn out, I couldn't see any details. So, um, even though the dimensions were right for me to go, well, could be a Sasquatch print. I didn't know whether it really was or not. Um, and, but anyway, as I was casting, I'd left the hiking stick leaning against a nearby tree when I was doing that and didn't realize I'd left it out there until I got all the way home. So that next week I was out there just to go get that. I knew exactly where it was at and I knew nobody would find it. I knew it'd be still leaning against that tree. <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> I parked my Jeep, pulled around. So, and I always do this for whatever reason. And you've heard other people comment. I always pull around so that if I have to make a quick getaway for some reason, I'm always pointed out the direction I have to leave in. So I park my Jeep like that. I get out of the Jeep. I grab my phone. I stuff it in my back pocket. And I start walking into the woods. Um, and the trail I was on, if you want to call it a trail, um, at one point, it was probably some kind of uh, I don't know, logging road, maybe when they were doing some kind of logging in there. It's very, very overgrown, very faint. Uh, but in some areas along it, you can see where there were tire ruts at one point. But now it's more or less nothing but a game trail, really. And I'm walking through that. Grass is really high. Ferns are really high. And I'm walking down this trail, and I'm heading in the direction that I have to go and I'm keeping my eye open for this one tree. Um, it was a hardwood tree. I don't know why it was just weird. Um, it had a bunch of pine boughs that were like stacked in the center of a fork. Like it forked at about seven foot up, had these pine boughs that were alternating, you know, broken in on one end. It's just weird. I, I'm not attributing that to anything to do with Bigfoot, you know, because what I know about, you know, why would, you know, whatever, but it was just weird that those were ended up there. And I was trying to figure out how to win because there were some pine trees around, but they were pretty far away from that tree. And so I always like to figure out, well, how could the wind have blown those broken branches? And they, how would they have had to flip and hit different things and ricochet and then end up in the bow or in this thing. Right. So I'm looking for that tree because I know I got to turn to the right to go towards where my hiking stick is. <clears throat> so I see the tree coming up. I glance up at it. Boughs are still there. Nothing's changed about it. And I get right up next to the tree and I look forward right dead ahead of me. And I know I must have looked right at it and did not see it. But there was a big ass doe laying in the grass there in the ferns in the high grass. I did not see that deer. Until I took a step forward, and then that's when the deer decided I was getting too close. She popped up and ran to the left, and it scared the living crap out of me because uh, I wasn't expecting it. And I had been looking right at it and didn't see her until she exploded out of that grass. And uh, she ran to the left. I was kind of tracking her, and but all of this happened in so fast in, in like seconds. She jumped. I did that. I heard screams from my right. I snapped my head to my right, and there it was. There he stood, man. And it was covered in hair, dark black hair, um, all hanging in front of his face and stuff. But I, I could see his face through his, his hair. Um, and I could see it well enough. It was kind of stringy. I don't know. I, that's why I ended up naming him Rasta, uh, because of dreadlocks. Maybe it was because it was kind of rain. It wasn't raining that day, but it had been kind of raining up 
up to that day and etc. Maybe he was just wet and his hair was stringy. But there was standing there, and he had to have been at least seven and a half, maybe eight foot tall. Because I know he's a foot foot and a half taller than me, and he was only 40 yards away from me. Just that's how close he was. And he had this really, really deep, just pronounced brow ridge. And the only thing I could see of his eyes from the distance I was at is they just looked black. I don't know if there was whites around his eyes or not. Um, and he just had this um, big, wide jaw, um, no chin to speak of, um, no lips. I didn't see any lips. His, you know, the picture of him is right there. On the, this is a picture that a friend of mine and my uh co-host on my uh, Friday show, Jen, she drew that just off of what I could describe. And she did a pretty good job of it. I mean, it's not exact, but it's, you know, like a picture would be God, you know, if I'd have gotten one of those, uh, but it's fairly close. It gives you a general idea of what I saw. And that's what I saw. His lips were like no lips. It was just a straight across his face, nose kind of wide and flat. Um, and, uh, just huge, man. Huge. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't believe how big he was and I, I only got a few seconds to really look at him because as soon as I saw him after those screams, as soon as I saw him and recognized what I was looking at, it was like my hands flew up in front of me and I know I had to have said it out loud. I said probably something like, Whoa, big fella. I did not mean to. F up your day. And I started taking three steps backwards. He wasn't moving, didn't move at all, didn't make another sound. Just stood there breathing. And I could hear the breathing. It wasn't, he wasn't making any noise, but you could hear him breathing. You know, it wasn't like he was grunting or anything like that, but you could hear him breathing. The only other thing I could hear was my heart pounding in my head. Uh, people have asked me before, well, did you hear any other noises or? No, because, I mean, my blood was rushed to my, you know, pounding in my, and that's all I could do. And I kind of just started to turn, trying to keep him in my peripheral to see if he was going to move for as long as I could. And when I, when he wasn't moving, I was like, all right, time for me to exit stage right, man. And, you know, I never actually broke into a run, I wouldn't say, because uh, I'm too fat, but, um. I was definitely in a fat man jog by the time I got to my Jeep. And um, I, I sat in my Jeep and I was looking back and I'm sure I probably looked back a couple of times just to make sure because I didn't hear anything like he wasn't like crashing through the trees coming after me or anything like that. Um, and I got back to my Jeep. I opened the door and I sat down. And I looked back at the tree line again and I fully expected. I, I got to tell you at this time in my head, I'm like, he's going to be standing there. He's going to be standing there looking at me. No, he wasn't nowhere to be seen. Did not see him. And I went to go start my Jeep. And my hand was actually, I'm not exaggerating. My hand was doing one of these numbers. I couldn't even get the key in the ignition. And so I'm like, okay, I can't. He's not there. I got to calm down. I got to slow my heart rate. I got to stop shaking. And so all this stuff is going through my head at the time, right? You know? Um, you know, all these years I've been interested in this and looking and hoping to see one. And now it's like, nobody's going to believe this. What the hell just happened? I mean, this is what's going through my head. What in the hell was that? What, what was going on? That was, holy crap. That was a Bigfoot. You know, I mean, it, it was like, nobody's going to believe this. Nobody's, nobody's, nobody's going to believe this. And I, you know, I sat on my phone, my phone was still in my back pocket and I could feel it back there. And I'm like, you're a dumbass, dude. But, you know, the last thing on my mind in that moment was like, you know, okay, he's not moving. Let's see what happens if I reach in my pocket. I, this, the idea that I had a camera in the form of a phone in my back pocket did not enter my mind because it was a really scary moment. I mean, it was, it was, I, I didn't know what to expect if I ever did. And that was one thing, man, for, that I did learn from this is that I had no idea what to expect if I ever saw one. I, I did not expect to see what I was looking at at all. 
You know, I was looking, I guess I kind of expected something that looked more like a, a gorilla standing on two legs or something, you know, but this is clearly a hominin. Um, and this is absolutely the only thing I really know about Bigfoot um, is that from what I observed, it is a hominin of some sort. Um, and what makes it a hominin is the fact that it's walks bipedally. You know, so um, beyond that, I don't know, man. I just know what it, what that one looks like and, you know, that it has to be some sort of hominin because it's walking by Piddly. Um, I It didn't look like me. It didn't look like you. And, um, you know, so I, I keep going out there, man. I haven't seen anything out there. I, I love to go camping out there and I always will. Um it's one of my favorite spots to camp. Um, but I haven't since then. It's been, you know, like I said, over two years now. And I've been out there to camp. Not a peep. Nothing. No weird noises even. Um, no footprints that I could find anywhere. I mean, and footprints are hard enough to find anyway in New York because of the, the way the substrate is in most places. Um, but, I mean, absolutely nothing. You know, not even something that was an impression that you can go or a line of impressions. You can go, holy crap, that looks bipedal and it's about the right size. I haven't even seen any of that. So it's onward and upwards from there, man. But that's it in a nutshell. And I can't, you know, the only thing when it comes to my encounter is that's what I have. Um, and it's not going to mean a whole lot to a lot of people. Um, except for me, because it did at least answer one question, at least for me, and that is whether they actually exist or not. Now, I can't prove that I saw what I saw. Um, and that's why when I go about investigating things and people are telling me what they saw, it's not like the first thing I, I, I don't ask first thing, did you get a picture of it? Now, I may ask, hey, did you get a picture of it? And if they say no, it's like, I understand why. Um, you're, I mean, especially if it's a random chance encounter, unless you have a camera already running, which I do now, every time I go out there or anywhere in the woods, automatically I'm already running my video camera just in case. Um, but if you're not doing that and you have a random encounter, good luck. Good luck getting a picture of it, because if it's a close-up one like that, you're going to be too scared to even think about taking a photograph of it. And if it's moving through the woods pretty quick and you just see it from a distance, good luck trying to catch that on film. You know, so when people don't have a, a photo or a video of the Sasquatch that they claim they encountered, I understand that totally. I, I totally understand that. I'm hoping someday I will, but... You know, that remains to be seen. That remains to be seen. I got to get never, better at a camera. It's never one of the questions that I ask people when I interview them because I've interviewed so many people who have had encounters like that. I was just talking to D.A. Roberts a couple of nights ago, and D.A. saw what he believes to be a dog man, and it's running across the road, and he and his family are driving fairly slowly on this gravel road, and he said, I literally had my phone in my hand with the camera on and I didn't even think about raising it up because it's just the situation. So I totally get that. And I was looking at the picture over your shoulder there as you were telling your story. And as you're doing the description, thinking, holy shit, that looks exactly like what you're describing to me. And it does look very human like to me. So when you're 40 feet away from this thing. I, I want to ask two two questions. You, you talked mm -hmm. about the scream. Can you talk a little bit about the detail of what the scream sounded like and the face of this thing? Did you get the impression that it was clearly aware of you, but how aware do you think it was? Was it like another human being standing there? Did you get a very human like feeling from this thing or what, what was going on? Um, all right. Well, let me tackle the first part first. The scream, that's really hard to describe because I've never really heard anything like this. Um, not out of any animal. And I've heard a lot of animals, different animals scream. I've heard cougars scream. I've heard bobcats and fisher cats and foxes. And I've heard all kinds of animals do different screams. 
Um, it did not sound anything like any of those. Um, it was just, it started out really, I guess, guttural and it raised to a real high pitch and kind of off a little bit, it, like back. And I don't know, man, I, there's no way that I could duplicate that sound myself. There's no way. And it was so loud. I mean, it, you know, it was kind of like, I, I think it was the shock of the whole thing. And it wasn't like infrasound or anything like that. Um, although I may have had an experience with that um, a few years ago. I'm not sure. Um, because, again, I don't know what would have caused it. Because um, I don't believe there was a Bigfoot in the area uh, when that happened. But anyway. Um, so, yeah, the scream, I, I don't know. I just, I do know this, though. If I ever hear it again, I'll know it's a Sasquatch. And if I ever hear anybody that records that sound, I'll be able to go, that's a Sasquatch. Now, I might not be able to prove it, but I'll know it. That, hey, dude, you actually recorded a Sasquatch because that's exactly what I heard. But I haven't heard any recordings of Sasquatch or, you know, claimed recordings of Sasquatch. to sound anything really like what that scream that he made. It was incredible. I mean, you could say that it sounded very primate-like. That's, I mean, that's about all I can say about it. I mean, I can't reproduce it, like I said. So, um, and it sounded like he was mad, you know, or, or a frustration. Now you talk about whether he was aware. I think he was fully aware of what I was, um, and and the whole situation going on. He wasn't happy. I mean. The look on his face didn't seem like he was happy. I mean, and I've said this before. I mean, maybe that could be his general look all the time. Maybe he just walks around looking like he's not happy. But, um, yeah, there was, you know, I, I think he understood the intent. Maybe. I mean, I don't want to try to foist a whole lot of intelligence on these things that I can't prove that they have. But um, I don't know. I it, It's... As they say, he's smarter than the average bear. Um, is he as intelligent as me? Probably in certain things, probably more so, um, especially when it comes to surviving out in the woods. I can go camping. I can survive, you know, and that. But to live like a Sasquatch does? No. Not at this point in my life. Hell no. I'm almost 60 years old. Uh-uh. No. Um, well, actually, I'm I'm gonna turn 59 60 is a year away yet um but uh no there was you know I, I i always that's the thing too is i always you know that's what you think about it's like well was he you know and i can't even say that you know maybe he was a little afraid too and i and people would be like dude he's eight foot tall three feet wide or four feet you know he's not afraid of you maybe he was maybe there was a little bit maybe, maybe there was a little uncertainty on his part as well um, cause he didn't know. And that's another reason probably why if I'd even had the wherewithal to reach towards my back pocket to pull out my phone, maybe that would have been a bad idea. Cause maybe then that would have got him to come at me thinking maybe I'm going to pull out a weapon or, you know, or something that, you know, maybe that would have triggered him. I don't know. Um, but was there an intelligence there? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously to me, there has to be. Because otherwise, I wouldn't be sitting here talking about it. I mean, because if that had been, say, a bear, I would have probably had to fight a black bear for my life, and I'd probably gotten killed by a black bear if it had been a bear. You know, but this was obviously something that can reason, I think. You know, again, I can't prove that. Um the only evidence I have is what I've seen myself, you know, that that's what makes me think that, yeah, he's, he, he, uh, he knew what was going on in the situation and he wasn't happy about it, but he could also probably see that I wasn't too thrilled about the whole thing either. So, you know, you, you kind of answered my other question, which was, did you get a feeling? And I've asked that of a couple of people that I've had on the show that have had, pretty close up face to face encounters. Could you get an eye or did you get a sense of whether this thing was aggressive or had the propensity to be aggressive? Or do you think it was just trying to be standing still and hopefully you would go the other way? Um, 
yeah, I mean, a lot of that would really start being really subjective, but um, I, hmm. I think he, yeah, I think he definitely could have been aggressive. Um, no doubt. Um, and, and that's probably one of the reasons why I was so scared because those screams didn't sound like, Hey, how you doing? Let's have a beer kind of screams. Let's all be friends. I just scared up his food. Um, cause there's no doubt in my mind he was tracking that deer. Now, people will say, well, maybe he was pushing it towards some others you didn't even see. I don't know. I don't know. Because I did not see any others. Is that a possibility? Yeah. If, it, if, if my hypothesis of what they could be or where they come from is close, yeah, they could probably, they probably do hunt uh, uh, in groups, you know, and maybe that's one of the ways. I can't say that's what was happening in that situation. I can say that there was a deer there. That's fact number one. And two, there was a Sasquatch there as well. And so I don't think it's just a coincidence that the two of them were just in that spot. And here comes fat old me stumbling in to find his uh, uh, hiking stick that he left out there. You said something interesting before you went into the encounter. And I want to go back to that and ask you about that. You said something about the odds being against seeing one of these things, yeah. just general. What did you mean by that? And is there something specific that you were talking about? Oh, I just, I think it's just, I think it's very rare. I think they're just, I don't think there's that many of them, man, really. And, you know, I don't have any statistics to back that up, really. Uh, people smarter than me can tell you why, and I agree with them. Um, Dr. Meldrum can tell you why, too. He does a great presentation on a good hypothesis of, of, of the social structure that it could be. He's not saying it is. But it's a really good one, and it makes sense. But in the state of New York, I, you know, I would love to think there's thousands of these things in New York. I just don't think that's a realistic number. Um, I mean, and yes, I know people are claiming that they see them, and I've talked to lots of people that are credible um, that I do believe have seen them. But um, I don't think you're just going to walk out there and just – Hey, there's a Sasquatch. Um, I just think that the odds, I mean, this was like 40, what at that time, 43 years. Yeah. About 43 years. I hadn't seen anything, you know, nothing even that I could go, Hey, what was that? You know, I mean, um, everything I'd seen was, you know, if I saw an animal, it was easily identified, you know, bear, deer, whatever. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, and and now I, I chance upon one. Um, that's incredible odds, man. And to think that I'm just going to go out there just because I saw him there one time that I'm going to see him again. I think it's astronomical. I just don't think there's that big of a population in New York. Um, if there is one, I mean, I don't really have any data to, to, uh, to really – you know, say anything one way or another. I mean, to think that there's, you know, millions of these things on the entire continent, which some people do, and I don't know where they get those numbers, but, you know, I mean, if there were that many of them, people would be, there would be no question. We wouldn't be sitting here trying to answer the question, for most people anyway, is Bigfoot a reality? Because if there were that many people, everybody would be running into them all the time because we encroach. We encroach on every animal's territories. We do it. There's very few. And I think that, you know, the population there's there's across the country is probably they are in key places that most people don't go. I think in New York, if you're going to really run across one, um, you might stand a good chance up in the Adirondacks because there's still a lot of really remote territory up there where they could pretty much stay away from people if they want to. Um, and I mean, there's some places in the Catskills, um, that they could probably do the same. And in the, uh, uh, Alleghenies where I was, um, but those kind of areas. And as long as they have enough food, water, and shelter, you know, to sustain them, they could sustain small populations in these areas. But 
I just don't think there's that many of them. And I think it's pretty rare. And I think the odds of me actually coming across one again are pretty high. I'm not going to say it's impossible. Well, yeah, it's a possibility. Um, that's why I'm doing the great uh, Finger Lakes Trail Sasquatch hunt next year, man. I'm going to um, walk the Finger Lakes Trail. And I'm going to do it in sections, though. Um, I can't I can't do a through hike. And everybody that follows me and stuff, they're good-naturedly teasing me. I think they got running odds that I'm going to end up being killed by some animal out there. Um, or maybe even dragged off by a Sasquatch. Who knows? But, um, yeah, I'm going to do it in sections. And there's plenty of areas in there where it goes through areas where there have been reported sightings or weird vocalizations, etc., that type of thing. And I'm just going to do a thorough investigation all the way across from west to east and see if I can turn up any other evidence anywhere of anything. That was one of the questions that when I had Jeff Meldrum on the show, I asked him about, you know, his hypothesis, his theory on how many of these things there might be. And obviously it's a unknown subjective answer that he gave, but he based it on black bear population and he gave a very good breakdown of what that would look like across the country. And interestingly, I just had a conversation you and I were talking before we kind of went online about my conversation with Thomas Steenberg yesterday. And one of the things that came up was when I had Peter Byrne on the show, Peter, we agreed on most everything, but I did disagree with him because he is a firm believer that these things do not exist and probably have never existed east of the Rockies. He just doesn't think they're outside of the Western United States, specifically the Pacific Northwest. And I talked to Thomas about that yesterday, and I'm sure you guys have had a conversation about it. He was really in that camp for many years. He agreed wholeheartedly with Peter Byrne that, in fact, they weren't until he came to New York State and checked it out himself. Mm -hmm. Because most people have this preconceived notion when you say New York or New York State, that it's a whole bunch of these sprawling urban cities and then there's these little speckles here and there of a few trees or maybe a park. And Thomas was like, holy shit, it's the complete opposite. Yeah. There's so much vast open space that these things could inhabit. Oh, yeah. He was amazed and it completely changed his mind on that. So you've kind of already answered the question for me, but certainly you, you have to believe that there are populations of these things east of the Rockies, I'm assuming, correct? Oh, oh absolutely. I mean, again, um, the black bear uh, comparison is a good thing, I think, because if it can sustain a population of black bears, it could probably sustain a family of, of Sasquatch if they live in families. I don't I have no idea what their social structure is. And I know there's a lot of people out there claiming that they do. And all I'm asking them is if, if, if this is really true, then show me the evidence that how you know this, you know, um, because I absolutely don't know any of it. You know, I, I know that they're a hominin of some sort. And that's where it ends with me. Um, you know, and yeah, they leave footprints sometimes. And maybe they do have an occasion to break some branches uh, along the way when they're moving through the woods. Uh, whether they're marking trails, I, I don't know. I seriously doubt that. I pretty much figure they know their way around their own territory so they're pretty familiar they don't need to you know mark anything i think if they're breaking and twisting branches it's usually probably just to get them out of their way if they're in their way you know and it may look like a trail you know um but yeah i mean i don't i don't it's all hypothesis you know until you actually can see it being done right you know um Hey, you know, somebody can show me a Bigfoot building a structure, man, then that would answer that question because, you know, most of the ones that I've seen are, are obvious bushcraft structures. I mean, there's no reason Bigfoot would be building this, you know, and then be like, hey, look, I'm Bigfoot. I just built this here. Come find me. Right. And I just don't think that's happening. But, you know, um, it's it's the search, man. It's It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. There's some frustration to it, you know, sometimes if you let things frustrate you and I'm only human. So, yeah, sometimes there are things that frustrate me. But You, you kind of answered the question. I had notes written down as you were talking about the stick structures and X formations. That's one of the things that I've talked to so many people about on the show because I've experienced some of that on my property here. 
I've never purported that it was a Sasquatch. Never seen a Bigfoot breaking branches and weaving things, but there's some weird stuff on my property that I see that could be very natural. It could be very innocuous, but it looks very strange to me. And I've had other strange things that have gone on on the property that kind of make me think that there may be something more to it. But you kind of answered the question already. I'm, I'm sort of in the same camp as you until somebody gives me some sort of evidence an eyewitness account that sort of correlates with, I saw this thing, I saw this tree structure and this thing was leaving that area. And then there was a footprint that I casted. And then you got the totality of the circumstances. I just don't know of anybody that has ever said, I saw a Bigfoot breaking these branches and doing these tree formations and X formations and these fulcrum type things. I think it's interesting, but I think I'm in the same camp as you is, I'm not really sure that that's entirely attributable to a Sasquatch. So yeah. well, it just doesn't make sense. The, the reason why I think this people haven't made the claim that well, I saw one doing it is because, okay, because now you're required. You just made a claim. Sorry. You have to show that claim to be true. Did you get video? Now that is like, did you get video of this thing doing this structure? You know, I mean, if you're going to make extraordinary claims and I'm not talking about, hey, I saw I encountered a Sasquatch. Now, this goes beyond that. You know, if you're going to make extraordinary claims, then extraordinary evidence is needed to back up those claims. Otherwise, I'm fully in my right to go. Eh, I, I don't really think that's anything because I don't see any evidence that really supports what you're saying. So, you know, um, yeah, but like I said, yeah, with, as far as the, the branch breaking and maybe even some times, you know, breaking a tree or whatever, maybe they have an occasion to do that. Why they would do it, I don't know. Other than, like I said, the, the one part, you know, they're pretty big for the most part. They got branches, you know, nobody wants some branches slapping in their face. So what are they going to do? Break them, you know, uh, to get them out of the way. Um I just don't, the, the, the X's, it just, I, I've seen lots of X's and every last one of them have been natural. There's never been a reason why that I could come up with that a Sasquatch would have done it. And my big thing is, is when, when it's an X, what if you're coming at it from the side? Doesn't look like an X then. You know, because people want to claim, well, X means don't go here. X is some kind of territory marker. Well, it depends on what angle you're coming at it from as to whether it's going to look like an X or not. So, you know, trees fall all the time together, you know. Um, and well, it's talk something that happens, man. Well, let's talk a little bit about evidence. You've done this 40 plus years. You've had this one encounter that it, Obviously, you and I talked about that a little bit on Pat's show. We were talking about the Freeman film, and you were like, basically, I don't give a shit if it's real or not because I know these things exist, so I don't need it to be proven to me. There's still tons of people out there like me who have not had those experiences. The only thing I've had is vocalizations. I think I was bluff charged and ran out of the woods when I was 12, but I didn't see what it was, so I can't say that it was a Bigfoot, right? So for the rest of us who haven't had that aha moment of absolutely being sure that these things are real and knowing that for a fact, mm -hmm. the only thing we have left is the evidence. What were you able to find in your research and boots on the ground in the woods outside of maybe a footprint here and there? Did you find anything else that would have convinced you had you not had a sighting that these things were real? Me personally? Or anything no. that you've seen when you were out investigating up until the time you had your encounter? Mm, well, I mean, there was always stuff that, you know, made me at least go, hey, wow, it's a it's a good possibility these things exist. Um, I mean, I've seen stuff that other people have found that have convinced me, right? Um, I myself, personally, no, I'll tell you the truth. Honestly, that's why you don't see it on my page. I have not found actual that much evidence. Yeah, I've found some footprints, um, but again, they're they're subjective. You know, I mean, to me, they looked like they were Sasquatch prints. Um, there was no way that they were any other print. Now, were they hoaxed? Well, I don't think so because of certain markers that you can, et cetera. I'm, I don't need to 
go into it. And I'm not an expert on Bigfoot prints anyway. So um, I think I could tell a real one from a fake one. And who knows, somebody might be able to pull one over my eyes too. Um, but as far as that goes, when it comes to like scat, hair, DNA stuff, nah. and for, you know, for many, many years, who the hell was thinking about DNA when I was younger? I'm, I'm not thinking about trying to collect DNA. Where am I going to get DNA from a Sasquatch back then, right? I'm not thinking about hair getting snagged on bushes or trees or anything like that. So um, as far as physical evidence, about the only thing I've found um, over the years, really, um, was you know what could what could have been footprints um most everything now i've heard weird noises that i couldn't identify um but that doesn't mean they were sasquatch now most of the sounds that i have recorded um if i didn't know what they were i found out what they were um and i've been able to vet them out that most of them were known animals um and I found out which animals they were. We heard one when we were camping. I didn't get it recorded, but I remembered exactly what it sounded like because it was scary. Uh, my wife and I were camping in a new spot um, out west of us. And um, there was a cougar. And, you know, just to make a long story short, um, we were in the tent. And this thing, it was like probably 3 o'clock in the morning, I think, maybe 2 o'clock in the morning. This thing screamed, and it was close. It was close. And this thing screamed so loud. My dog didn't want to get out of the tent. This thing screamed, and I'd never, ever heard this kind of scream before. I knew it wasn't a bobcat or fisher cat or anything like that. And the first thing that entered my mind, Brian, was not Bigfoot because it didn't sound anything like that scream either. And the first thing that actually entered my mind was Banshee, right? And for people that don't know what a banshee is, look up some Irish folklore. It'll tell you what the banshee is. It's usually foretelling of, of the uh, death that's going to happen. And, and But what I was picturing in my mind, if I got out of the tent, was, you know, some pasty-faced uh, girl with long black hair and a white thing coming at me, right? You know, so um, I didn't want to get out of the tent. We actually ended up sleeping in the car that night we're like oh no let's just all go let's go up to the car i feel safer in the car after hearing that so i didn't know what it was and but i got home and i started looking online and trying to go what sound what did that sound like and then i happened upon the video man exactly and found out that it was a cougar because in the video this cougar made the exact same scream that what me and my wife heard. And I even asked her, I said, does this sound like what we heard? Do you agree? And I played it for her and she went, that's exactly it. And I'm like, well, that's a cougar. <laughs> that's what we heard. Um, but um, It's funny that most people don't do that though. They'll hear something that's weird in the woods. Like we've heard things here that I can't explain on the property. And I've, I've had David Ellis on the show, you know, and I've, I've went through just about every recording that David has. And that I can find online, I can find nothing that sounds like, the things that we've heard yeah. and you have to scratch your head, you know, could it have been this cat that had something wrong with its throat? I mean, yeah, it could be anything, but I don't like to jump to conclusions and say, Oh, well, that means it's a Bigfoot. I'm right. just not that guy. So let's talk a little bit about that. I want to talk about something that you mentioned frustrations earlier, mm -hmm. and I've, I've had a couple of conversations with people about it recently and it's always frustrated me, but just more so recently, Pat, for example, on Squatch talk, I don't know, about a month or so ago, did his social experiment where he went out and took some, some of these pareidolia photos purpose mm -hmm. and posted them up and said nothing about Bigfoot, just did some the big famous red circle squatches, right? In these photos of nothing but leaves and limbs, and there's absolutely nothing there. He posts them up on social media and like 75,000 people this thing reached. And Pat himself said, I don't have that kind of freaking reach. I've got 900 people in my, my group that is yeah. fans group of the show. So I think that's one of the biggest frustrations I have with the community. And I know you have some of that because I've, I've seen some of your videos where you talk about that kind of stuff and, and photos and what not to do and what to do when you're posting stuff like that. 
I mean, what do you think about that? What is it a collectively? And I don't want to throw everybody into the same group. I never do yeah. that. If you ever yeah. say all and always, you're probably lying. So, yeah. but it seems like to me, so many people that are involved in this just do that so much with these blob squatches and these circle, these red circle squatches. And in meanwhile, I'll just, I'll just use myself for an example, right? I'll be a narcissist to it for a second. I think I do a pretty good Bigfoot show with a lot of great people who share some really amazing encounters that I 100% hands down believe to be some of the best anecdotal evidence that I've ever heard that these things are real. Right. And I've got a pretty big reach with my audience, not as big as I'd like it to be, but it doesn't get the same attention as a pareidolia picture of nothing but leaves and stems with a red circle around. Yeah. And Pat proved that. Oh, you know, really a lot is. of people, have, I'm sure people give him a hard time for it. Some people thought it was brilliant. I thought it was the most fantastic thing in the world that he could have yeah, done. I, I thought it was a great idea. You know, I mean, so it's just, what do you think about that? I mean, what is it about that in this community that people latch onto that? Because they want to, they want, and I'm not taking, I'm not like saying that people don't have, enough other things to believe they want something to believe in man they really want something to believe in and and that doesn't make them bad people you know i mean it's like i think a good majority of the people not no not even a good majority but but a lot of people i think a lot of people that are like into the subject i think a lot of them just you know all they want is the entertainment of it you know i i think that you know that they you know they they want it to be real they they think it's a great idea, it's something magical to some people, um, you know. But just you know, the fact that to me, I'm like I'm I'm on the side that I'm like I don't get it, man. Because just the fact that there could be another bipedal, well, bipedal is automatically given, uh, but another hominin uh, that still exists with us on the face of the planet and didn't go extinct like so many other of our uh, hominin ancestors did and is still around that in itself to me is magical and amazing, you know, and they did it. We, we're here because we were able to develop technology and, and we didn't adapt to our environment. We adapted the environment to us and they are still here and they've not done any of that. They've adapted to their environment, you know? So, I think that's magical enough, but I think with the pareidolia, people just want to see it. And so it doesn't matter. And I think the people, a lot of people that put those out, maybe they really believe what, what they're putting out is, 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 is what they're saying it is. I think there are some of them that know exact, absolutely they're not putting out any, and they're doing it because they know they're going to get a lot of likes and a lot of looks and a lot of, wow, that's a great picture. And, you know, when it's not, you know, uh, but people want it to be real. So they're going to see it, you know, um, you know, when, when, I mean, I have to go through, I go through some pictures. I used to uh, take pictures with my 35 millimeter, my Canon. I go out and just shoot pictures of the forest just for the heck of it. Cause it's pretty right. And I've gone through, you know, mine just to go, are there any para? Is there any pareidolia in any of my pictures? And, yeah, I could pick out some that I found pareidolia. I put one up uh, when I was doing a show. You know, if if I'd have put a little red circle around that and popped it out there, man, that would have been like, oh, yeah, there'd be a lot of people. Now, there would, of course, be some like, no, I think that's a tree, man. You know, there'd be, you know, and then there might even be some trolls that'll be mean about it. Uh, but then there's going to, there would be a lot of people, but like, yeah, I see them. I see them. And, you know, I, look, if you got to put a red circle around something to draw my attention to it, then there's nothing there for me to actually look at. You know, if this has to have red circles and arrows uh, to, you know, I mean, you can suggest anything to somebody when it comes to pareidolia and they'll go, oh, yeah, I see that. You know, whereas if originally they might look at it and go, I don't see anything, you know, oh, no, no, no. But it's a face. You see the eyes and the nose and the mouth, and all of a sudden you're going, oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah. So. Um, I, I think it's mostly harmless to some extent, but it really doesn't do much for the actual research. Um, 
and it does keep uh, a lot of people from taking things seriously about this, especially science. Um, and uh, and also, you know, we've talked about this, or I've talked about this on my shows. When you get people out there that are trying to take advantage of people's belief or um, and I, I'm going to use the word gullibility because some people are gullible. And if there's people out there that try to take advantage of that uh, monetarily, that's a bad part. And that is part, unfortunately, part of this community, too. There are some players in there that they don't care about anything except for making the money off of it as much as they can. And they'll, you know, that's why people hoax stuff most of the time. Yeah, you have a few people out there hoaxing probably just as a joke. Um, but if you get some serious hoaxers, like, you know, we know their names. Rick Dyer's one of them, you know, those types of people, you know, and they're going to exist uh, in this community. But people in general, you know, with the pareidolia, um, yeah, just because they really want to. I mean, I look at these pictures and I really want to see something in them. But and if I really do see something in it, I'll be like, well, I think I, well, I, it, most of the time it's like, well. I don't know exactly what it is. I'm not going to say 100% that it's a Bigfoot, but it's not pareidolia. You know, I can see that. I can recognize that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you want to you want to see it, man. You want to see it. Um, and people want to think that they're taking pictures of them, you know. Um, yeah, I was telling DA about it when I was talking to DA Roberts the other day. It happened to me. I posted some pictures that I had taken from the trail cam where I'd set up on this stump where this turtle shell had been stuck on my property, which was really weird. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm going to set this up and it may be like a gifting situation. So I'm going to set up this gifting stone and put this stone here. And then I'm going to put this camera up. And then I ended up putting an apple in the stump. And I took some photos from the SD card and it was nothing but raccoons for like three days. There was raccoons, you know, three or four raccoons one day, two this night. I think there was three the other night. <coughs> <coughs> and nothing happened to the apple. Nothing happened to the rock. And I took the camera down on the third day. And I back the very next day and something had taken a bite out of the apple and put it back into the stump. Or it was on a stick on the stump. Mm -hmm. And it was either one big bite or two bites. And I posted the photos of that on reluctantly on my social media, because I was like, people are going to think I'm crazy or I'm trying to hoax shit, but it, it just is what it is. Right. Right. Nothing happened to the apple for three days. And then I take the camera down and I come back the very next morning, walk the dogs and something had taken a bite out of the apple. But I posted some of these photos that were taken at like two or three o'clock in the morning. So it's pitch dark and you see these little raccoons, you know, they're looking at the camera and they're doing their thing. And one of my fans from the show took the photos and then they send them to me in messenger and they have messed with the contrast and they brought the light up and down and they swear there's a black either dog man or Bigfoot figure standing over to this side of the stump where these raccoons are playing around. And I'm like, you know, I appreciate that. I haven't posted them. I think I'll probably post them in the next week or so just because I've talked about it on a couple of episodes now and it's people are going to start asking. I'm going to post the pictures. But, you know, when you look at it, obviously I like, well, that kind of looks like a head. That kind of looks like ears. It kind of looks like a nose. <laughs> yeah, so I start doing that pareidolia thing, right? It's a suggested thing and yeah. you've messed with the contrast. And it, But it just proves, it's like I told DA the other night, it proves that you can literally take anything and make something out of it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what most people do. I feel, and I, I agree with you. I think most of the time it's harmless. And then there's those few extras out there that like to do it for clickbait. And if, you know, they've yeah. got a YouTube channel or something, and they're going to put up a nice thumbnail and get people to say Sasquatch discovered, and it's just pareidolia crap. Yeah. People are going to do that regardless, but yeah. I agree with you. I don't think it does any service at all to people that are serious about it because there are a lot of folks that do have really good photos, I think, that probably will never come forward because they see what happens when people do these blob squatches and world circle squatches. Yeah. And they I, want the I, same thing to happen to them, right? Yeah, I think there's some of that in that. And there may be pictures out there that we don't know about. I mean, I'm willing to entertain that thought. Um, and I can understand. I mean, it's like, 
I've never had an opportunity. Well, I can't say that I haven't had an opportunity to film one. I did have an opportunity and I didn't take it. Right. But, um, I mean, other than that, I mean, I've never really, you know, cause I don't go out there and run across things that I, you know, wow, there's a Sasquatch. I, let me film it, you know? Um, but I, I think that maybe some people might have something, you know, um, and maybe they're not showing it because of that, you know, and, and I go through that too myself. I'm like, what if, what if, what if, let's just say, what if I'm on this, uh, Florida, uh, Florida, this, uh, Finger Lakes trail, uh, little investigation that I'm doing in, in any part of it. And suppose I do get a, a picture of Bigfoot, you know, not a blob, not blurry. You can look at it and go, holy cow. That's either a real Bigfoot or a guy in a really good costume, right? I mean, because that's what it's going to come down to, right? Even if it's a really good picture. Would I put it out if I had it? I, you know, I wrestle with that. Would I just put it up and go, look at this Bigfoot I just pictured, you know? Yeah, do I think that people would believe me? Yes, because the people that follow me know that I don't, you know, I'm not I'm not BSing, man. I, I, don't, I don't have a narrative you know, or anything like that. Um, but I don't know. Again, that's the thing. It's like there's so many pictures and none of it is conclusive. And it's not conclusive enough uh, for science to go, okay, you've convinced us. Sasquatch is real. We're going to like, you know. But even if science were to say that, then what? Okay, Sasquatch is real. There's still going to be people that have never seen one and probably never will see one, right? Um, but yeah, maybe some people... I knew a guy that had a pretty good uh, 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 camera shot um, of what I think is a Sasquatch um, that he said he would never release because um, he wasn't a researcher. He wasn't an investigator. He wasn't interested in Sasquatch. This was just totally something that he was trying to monitor on his property, some other wildlife and just happened to catch this thing and i said that's pretty good man and um you should i mean what are you gonna do with it he's like nothing i'm like well there's probably some people who probably want to see this he's like nope i don't need the headache he's like i don't need the headache he's like i don't know about these things i'm not looking to be the guy that proves bigfoot he's like and that's not going to prove it he said i've read enough about it. i've seen enough about it online even this is not going to prove anything. Yeah, I don't think he's alone at all. I think that's happened a couple of times to me. I've had people that I've talked to and people that I didn't necessarily talk to directly that talked to people trusted very, very much so. They told me the same thing. You know, there's some incredible photos and incredible videos of these things out there that people will never release because of that kind of stuff. Let's talk about one more thing before we close out. Other cryptids, this is always something that fascinates me, and I've only had a couple of people on the show. D.A. Rocks was one that I talked to. I interviewed that, that show will be coming out probably next. It may be coming out in the next week or so. And he's had a couple of encounters with what he believes to be Dogman. I've had okay. one, two other people on the show that have had encounters with what they believe to be Dogman. So I have a hard time with that. I've said it so many times to everybody I've interviewed that claims to have seen them and have not. I have a hard time with those things being real and existing, at least in a physical form. Mm -hmm. And then there's, there's a myriad of other cryptids. We won't even get into the rakes and other things that chupacabras and things that people claim to see. Let's just stick with dog man to keep it simple. Where are you on other cryptids existing? And do you think it is a possibility that some of those things are actually flesh and blood creatures that people are encountering? Or do you think it's more of a misidentification or maybe even psychosis? Yeah, uh, I think the best way I could put it with the cryptid thing, um, the reason why I am skeptical of other cryptids, um, if, if somebody wants to change my mind about some of these cryptids actually existing, then all I ask for is at least enough, at least as much evidence that I have that Bigfoot exists. And then I'll be like, hmm, okay, you got something there. 
but so far I haven't seen it. As far as Dogman goes, I love werewolf movies. Ever, <laughs> I've loved them ever since I was a kid. Still love them. I love the idea of Dogman. Do I have a lack of belief in Dogman? Yeah, because I have seen no evidence. And yes, I know there's anecdotal people, pe but I don't know. Either some of those people are probably making it up or um, they're mistaken. That's all I can say. There is absolutely no precedence um, at all. Again, like you kind of mentioned, there's no precedence in nature for a bipedal species of canine. There was, there is for Bigfoot primates, um, you know, evolved, or at least some of us did evolved uh, through evolution and through um, because of uh, environmental reasons, we adapted and we became bipedal. Um, it was advantageous to us. A canine species, I don't see where it would even, evolution would ever find that advantageous to a canine species to become bipedal and still, per, you know, and still attain or uh, keep um, its uh, basic bio, basic same biology of a canine. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's no precedence for it. Um, and if you want to talk about supernatural stuff, well, I have a lack of belief in that, too. I'm not saying that weird stuff doesn't happen. Weird stuff does happen to people. That much I acknowledge. I even acknowledge that, you know, um, it'd be pretty stupid of me to say that science can answer everything. I don't think science can answer everything. Science has to have stuff it can test and experiment with before it can come up with an answer. And if you don't have anything, and that's basically what the supernatural is, you don't have anything to test. You know, you, you have nothing that can, that you can even perform experiments on and go, well, this is real, you know. So, um, but yeah, dog man, no, no. I think a vast majority, and this is just my opinion, maybe a lot of people, you can send all your hate mail to WNYBIG uh, at yahoo.com. I think a lot of people with the dog man, especially the ones with the dog man channels and stuff, I think they're exaggerating. I think they're, they're, they're playing some fun games with their stuff and, and things like that. But, um, and, um, yeah, for the people who really think they've seen the dog man and absolutely think that they saw one, I think it's a misidentification probably of some sort it has to be. I'm kind of there with you, man. But like I said, I've had a couple of people on the show, Bettina Moss. I've had now DA Roberts on the show and they're pretty convinced that what they saw was a dog man. So, I guess the, the jury's still out on dog, man, but you've mentioned it a couple of times. Before we go, let's talk about how people can get a hold of you. Talk about your YouTube channel, what they can expect when they tune into your shows, and where can they find you? Um, well, yeah, you can find me on YouTube. It's uh, Western New York Bigfoot Investigation Group. Um, and I have, like, two shows that I do um, every week, usually. Uh, sometimes I miss it because I'm working so much now. Um, but, um, yeah, that's Sasquatch random live. Usually that's on at, uh, what? Seven o'clock on Mondays, uh, 7 PM Eastern on Mondays. And then, um, usually Joe asks, wait a minute, what is on Fridays at 8 PM Eastern? Um, Sasquatch random live is self-explanatory. It's usually about Sasquatch, Bigfoot, etc. cetera. Uh, that show primarily, I try to get uh, serious researchers and, and, and people, on, on you know, that, that, uh, I want to, uh, give some exposure to, to sh show that, Hey, you know, there are really people out here that are really serious about this and they're really trying, uh, to, uh, solve this. Um, and you know, i talk about random subjects about Bigfoot on there. Um, Joe asked, wait a minute, what on Fridays, that's just covers everything that covers everything. That's, Stuff that makes me go, wait a minute, what? And we'll talk about it and, and we'll figure out whether it's real. Is it make believe? Is it like one of those things you got to go, it's weird and I don't have an explanation for it. Um, so, um, yeah. And other than that, anybody can reach me through the email WNYBIG uh, at yahoo.com. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it, man. Um, I have a store if anybody wants to buy some merchandise. Um, you know, you always got to pop that in because, you know, Absolutely. you got to pay for you got to pay for a hobby somehow, man. You know, you I don't call anybody 
for selling ball caps and cups and shirts and things like that because you know you got to fund a hobby somehow so but i have links to all that in the show notes everybody go over and check it out joe i've had a blast talking to you man thanks for Absolutely. coming on the show. It was fun it's fun really enjoyed it awesome <laughs>